SpaceX is set to face one of its most ambitious Starship challenges so far. Flight 10 is only a short time away, and this mission will push the Super Heavy booster into attempting a recovery method never tried in this exact way before. Preparations at Starbase have accelerated, with visible signs that the company is aiming firmly for the August 24, 6.30 p.m. launch window. Earlier this week, crews fitted Booster 16 with the Flight Termination System, hardware that enables remote destruction of the vehicle if it loses control or cannot make a safe return. This installation is a mandatory step for meeting safety requirements and is part of securing the launch license. Soon after, Booster 16 was rolled out to the launch pad, marking the shift into final launch readiness. Ship 37, the upper stage, has not yet been transported to the pad, though that move is expected shortly. The test ahead for Booster 16 carries major risk. Its recovery sequence builds on a maneuver tested in Flight 9, aimed at cutting fuel use and boosting payload capacity. The plan changes the way the booster comes back after stage separation, offering a potential path for carrying more mass to orbit while needing less propellant for landing. In simple terms, once the upper stage separates, the booster will climb to about 68 to 70 kilometers before its engines shut down. At that altitude, the hot staging process begins. The upper stage fires while still attached to the booster. Immediately after, the booster tilts to start its return toward the Gulf of Mexico. By leaning its body to expose more surface area, it takes advantage of atmospheric drag to slow down, reducing the need for heavy engine use. When conditions are right, the booster will swing back to a vertical position for the landing sequence. This shift is managed through a mix of controlled engine thrust and precise grid fin movements. The technique is expected to cut fuel use by roughly 40% compared to a straight vertical drop. The benefit is straightforward. Traditional landings demand large amounts of propellant to fight gravity. By using air resistance for part of the slowdown, more fuel remains available for launch, letting Starship carry heavier loads. Projections indicate this could mean up to 30 extra tons of cargo, enough for multiple dozen Starlink satellites or similar payloads. This is where the danger factor increases. The maneuver demands exact timing and steady control. If the rotation interferes with fuel delivery or causes instability, the booster could fail to restart its engines and be lost. A similar attempt with Booster 14 ended in destruction. While Booster 16 is a new build, which could improve its odds, the possibility of failure is still high. Adding to the complexity, SpaceX will deliberately shut down one of the three central engines for the final landing burn. The aim is to verify whether the two remaining engines can complete the landing alone. The results will help test backup capabilities for future operations. In this final phase, the booster will briefly hover before engines shut down, and it descends into the gulf. The purpose behind these trials is straightforward, increase payload capacity, while cutting costs. With each kilogram valued at roughly $100, even small gains in capacity can yield millions of dollars more per mission. Perfecting this technique could significantly raise Starship's economic return without raising launch expenses. Flight 10's outcome will determine whether this landing approach becomes a regular part of Starship operations. If successful, it could redefine how heavy lift boosters are recovered and reused. If it fails, the company will still gather critical data to refine the design for future attempts. With only days left before launch, all eyes will be on Booster 16 as it attempts to execute one of the most complex and potentially rewarding maneuvers in SpaceX's history. Before Flight 10 can be considered a success, Booster 16 must first demonstrate that the exact faults that destroyed Booster 14 have been corrected. This is vital, because B-16 has been assigned to complete the mission that B-14 could not. In Starship Flight 9, the Super Heavy booster re-entered the atmosphere at a noticeably sharper angle than in past flights, reaching around 17 degrees. This maneuver was intentional, aimed at collecting performance data at the edge of the vehicle's limits. However, this steep profile altered how the liquid methane and liquid oxygen moved inside the tanks. When it came time for the landing burn, only 12 of the intended 13 Raptor engines ignited. 
The remaining engine stayed offline, most likely due to unstable fuel delivery caused by the unusual approach angle. Within moments of ignition, a violent energy release was recorded near the rocket's base. Telemetry ceased shortly afterward. The last readings placed the booster roughly one kilometer above the designated safe splashdown zone. A detailed review revealed that aerodynamic stress from the steep angle had exceeded the design capacity of the fuel lines. This overstress damaged the plumbing, allowing methane and liquid oxygen to come into direct contact, a highly explosive combination, which caused the booster's destruction. As a result of the Flight 9 failure, SpaceX set a new rule for this booster type. Future missions will return at a shallower angle to reduce aerodynamic loads on the structure and fuel systems. For Flight 10, Booster 16 has been fitted with reinforced fuel lines designed to handle movement of cryogenic liquids without creating pressure spikes that could damage the plumbing. The angle of attack has been intentionally lowered to keep engine systems and structural components within safe stress limits. In addition, SpaceX has made contingency plans in case of another catastrophic failure. They have contracted a specialized international salvage team to recover any Starship debris that could reach South Texas or cross into Mexican territory. This move is meant to reduce legal and diplomatic risks. Following Flight 9's explosion, Mexico's president publicly stated that her administration was reviewing possible breaches of international environmental laws and considering legal action if debris or contaminants entered Mexican land or waters. SpaceX has shown it is taking these warnings seriously. On July 19, 2025, the recovery vessel LB Jill was deployed to retrieve the tail section of Booster 13 from the Gulf of Mexico. The component was delivered to Brownsville Port and then transported for detailed examination to assess the extent of damage caused by seawater exposure. Proactively recovering hardware not only aids SpaceX's technical analysis, but also demonstrates cooperation with Mexican authorities and adherence to environmental regulations, helping to prevent future disputes. Now, turning to Ship 37, this mission is just as risky. Although SpaceX hasn't confirmed it, it's widely expected they will try something critical. Restarting a Raptor engine in the vacuum of space after it has been shut down for a while. This may sound routine, but it is one of the hardest steps toward making Starship capable of Mars travel. In space, there is no air pressure to help the fuel systems. The ignition system must work entirely on its own. On top of that, the freezing cold of space can solidify methane or oxygen or damage engine parts. The fuel must stay liquid and ready to burn. For Mars missions, engines will need to restart multiple times over months. The path to Mars isn't a straight line. It requires precise timing to match orbits. Even being a few seconds off can mean missing the planet entirely. No rocket engine today has been proven to restart reliably after months in the deep cold of space. Fuel can freeze, seals can crack, and metal can become brittle. If SpaceX solves this, it would be a major breakthrough. The test plan for Flight 10 is simple. Start the engine, shut it down, leave it inactive in space for about an hour, then restart it. If it works, it brings Musk's Mars plans much closer. But there's a catch. Before they can prove the restart works, they have to make sure there are no fuel leaks. Starship carries thousands of tons of liquid methane and oxygen. That much fuel puts huge pressure on its plumbing. Leaks can happen in engines, tanks, or pressurization systems, and even a tiny one can destroy the vehicle. Preventing leaks isn't just for completing this mission. It's a key requirement for Starship's rapid reuse design. The vehicle needs to handle extreme forces from launch, flight, and landing without letting fuel escape. This is even more critical because NASA plans to use Starship for Artemis 3 in 2026, which will require a fuel system that works flawlessly in space. A leak on Flight 10 could set back NASA's approval and delay the Artemis schedule. On the other hand, if Ship 37 flies without any leaks, SpaceX will be one step closer to making Starship fully reusable, which is essential for lowering launch costs and flying more often. The stakes are high. Flight 10 isn't just another test. It's a trial for B-16's improved landing systems, 
S-37's engine restart in space, and the reliability of Starship's fuel systems under real mission conditions. Success could move SpaceX closer to regular low-cost spaceflight and deep space missions. Failure could mean months of delays and more redesign work. The countdown is on, and soon we will know if Flight 10 can meet all these challenges in one mission.